Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So today we're going to go through two videos in one um, posting. So I'm going to go through this update about illegal, illegal uh, miners. So the latest update is that 14 of them emerged on their own at night time. They thought the police officers went there and suddenly were found. All of them are uh, illegal in South Africa, all of them are from the neighboring country, Mozambique. In this story, there's also 14 year old Mozambican nationals. And um, yeah, see, there's a lot of criminality here. 14 year old under the mine down there. You know, this is child uh, labor. And uh, there's a lot of criminality with this. Anyways, after this video of illegal miners, we're going to go and explore another videos around this puzzle shop. Because this puzzle shop, like I said, Roman Posa, very weak president, the worst in the democratic South Africa. 21 days given to these uh, shops to continue to trade. We now have two markets trade and all the political leaders, Patriotic Alliance, Action SA, and all of them out there trying to clean the street. They don't want people trading, which is a good reason. That's what they should have done anyway, not have people trade without registering. You register your business first, being uh, audited, and then trade. Because then when you've registered, it means that you've met the standards of uh, running a very risky business of selling food to the public. It's about safety of the public here. Anyway, we're going to go through the well, first video. It's going to be about you know illegal miners. Um, and then we're going to analyze a video about these puzzle shops. Child is amongst the 14 illegal miners arrested in Stillfontein when they attempted to resurface from a disused mine. The Zamazamas, all Mozambican nationals, used Shaft 10, which is linked to Shaft 11, currently being monitored. Um, the illegal miners say life underground has been difficult. Some claim that they've been kept underground against their will. Newsroom Africa, Zinikom Plaba, is um, joining us now from Stillfontein and he joins us live. Zinikom, very good morning to you. Tell us about what happened last night, um, how you guys got this tip off, what some of those illegal miners were telling you and what we expect to happen today. Uh, good morning, Aldrel. Well, we got calls from the uh, spokesperson of SAPS, uh, Colonel um, Atlanta Matt, at about 11 p.m. as we are all fast asleep. And she told us that there are some arrests which, were, which had been made by law enforcement agencies in, in the vicinity where they are closed shut. And of course, we rushed to the scene. And on our arrival, indeed, we found about 14 illegal miners who had been apprehended by police officers. And of course, the first thing we, you know, we needed to do was just to verify, you know, where they were coming from. The police were still searching them, and of course, we were given an opportunity to speak to them to get more details about the ordeal underground, but also get a sense of their background. One individual, you know, was recruited in Pumalanga in Middleburg, you know, a few months ago, and of course, he shared some personal story in terms of how he got, you know, to find himself in Stillfontein. Let's take a listen uh, to this to to this gentleman who shared his story with me as we started interviewing those individuals last night on the scene. Yeah, Gulum Sevens, I think I should lama suit to Bang Tole, a middle peg, I mean, a young Tempest, some sevens, it's Gulum Sevens. Managing Yamanga, also a middle peg, who's Alana. Yabona, distance, I'm going to must only complain and yana got Pumis Palm Lava. The Vahamba and the Quantum was Fagala Pogulum Coti, Manje, Wood Lag Sangani, Sne, three months is in Adli, Pilang a cold Kati. I'm a police of us, I'm Fagula. So that's a gentleman, that's one gentleman was recruited in Pumalanga. And of course, as we spoke to several others, Aldrin, we found out that actually the recruiters who are said to have been driving a minibus white quantum you know, uh, in terms of trying to recruit individuals to come and work here. We also heard that some of them were, were recruited in Johannesburg, in Dislut, but also in Alexander. But what, what was very you know, worrying, Aldrin, was the fact that none of these gentlemen knew where they were going. That's number 
on. They didn't know what, or what kind of job they had been uh, they would be doing once they get to Stillfontein, and they only realized once they got into the mining shafts themselves, that's when they were told that they needed to go underground. So at that point, there was no turning back, uh, turning back for them. They could not, uh, were, they could not, you know, decline the job offer. And of course, you know, they told us that once you started, you know, complaining, once you started um, saying that you're no longer interested in the job offer, they will be pointed with guns. And of course, they ended up going underground without, you know, any option, you know, or withdrawing their services of wanting to go back home. The gentleman from Pumalanga said that, you know, he was found, you know, as he was walking around, you know, the, some of the places they use to market you know, where they where they camp and wait for potential employers to come and, and identify them for potential gardening jobs and stuff like that. And then he was he was he was advised that there are some jobs in Gauteng in Johannesburg to be specific. So he hopped in onto that particular minibus quantum uh, and of course on his way, you know, when he saw that they were passing Johannesburg, then that's when he started getting worried. That's when he started, you know, asking um, asking questions, inquiring where exactly was he taken to. And he also told us ultimately that, you know, when he left he only, he only told his wife that I just got an offer uh, in Johannesburg, so I need to rush and secure that job. And ever since then, he never got an opportunity to communicate with But the bottom line, they're all illegals. They're all illegals. They shouldn't be in South Africa. They're all illegals. There's also a, a minor, 14 year old. What's another thing when I'm listening to this story? I think the practice of just getting people promising a job and lining up for the job where they need, it needs to end. That's why they're exploiting these illegal migrants in South Africa. It needs to be banned to be illegal. So that if you're going to, um, you want an employ to hire people, you need to go to an agency, you need to interview people, and you should register yourself as a potentially employer looking for people. But you cannot just uh, be collecting people because we can see from the story, if true, that these people, they were dragged into there. They promised a job and then they were dragged into this mine against their will by these thugs. It looks like the thugs who were driving this were all from Lesotho, the neighboring country. So, you know, this issue to me it is also just like this puzzle shop, it's the failure of governance. Governance failed. ANC has not been governing, like I said, and also the DA as well as an opposition has not been uh, putting any alternative and actually putting the government into account for the things that the things that DA chase are things that are of co not consent to majority of South Africa anyway. That's why they still are around 20%. Yeah, so at least now there are other centre-right parties that are, are emerging and I think those parties are likely to be successful than DA because they're very much inclusive and they look, they kind of like the Trump style of sort of um, political um, to gunner people about the issues that are happening within their country in their neighbourhood rather than just talking about things that are distance away, international stuff and affairs. People don't really uh, worry about those things. People have worry about the bread and butter. The economy is stupid and that's true. his wife whom you know he shares four kids with so that's some of those are some of the insight information we get that from illegal miters as we started engaging them last night okay so does this mean that they were never compensated for the work so-called work that they've done and just quickly give us an update around what happens today so the four i spoke to all said that they have not been paid and they've never, they were never told when they would be paid. And the only thing that was said in regards to payment was that they will get compensated once they come onto the surface. However, no one is allowed to come onto the surface. You know, so that means they have no, they have not made any income. And of course, the gold they've been digging, they have no idea where it's been taken to and who has taken it, or who has taken it 
on to the surface. So today we're expecting, you know, the official arrest operations by the by the expert to surface, but also we'll get an update from the spokesperson of the police here in Northwest in terms of what will be happening to those 14 illegal miners who were arrested yesterday. You have heard of that sad story about the illegal miners and that miner who is 14 years old, all from Mozambique. So we're going to go to the next one as well, that also include illegal migrants as well. That's Puzzle Shop. Yeah. This one is worrying me the most, is this one, that this Puzzle Shop. This one, it's really worrying me. Okay, let's listen to this one. What allow you people to operate shops in the informal market? You've been operating here by force. We are not the government. We are, we are, we are, we are not Ramaphosa. We are not the president of this country. We will lead the government as the community. So now, do us a favor. You are wearing your shoes. We are recording everything. Everything is on record. Take your money. We are going to take out the stuff. Nobody is going to loot. Nobody is going to take your money. Call your people to come and fetch your stock. And we, we are also not here to make noise. The, the landlord has spoke, spoke to you enough. Tonight we are here to work. So that's the message we wanted to send to you. And the stock is going business. out now. Thank Ladies, you. this is what you're going to do. We're taking yes. out everything now. No so, looting. Yeah. Yeah. Protect yeah. his stock. Yes. He must just take his money. Yes. 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 Give them the Victoria the people's IDs and the bank cards. You must first bring that out. So here they are community members of uh, this um, community in Soweto where the kids been dying in this puzzle shop. So like I said, from a Apostles uh, 21 day registration really was ill thought of and it I don't think he actually uh, consulted with this community because this community, they want all of these puzzle shops closed. They want them all closed. So what is he going about about this 21 days registration as you can see for a lot of videos that people are posting they just don't want these people in their homes and unfortunately for these people that are there most of them don't have any uh, legal documents to be there in a way anyway and what they're doing is actually not it's breaking the immigration act of south africa and because uh, there's no leadership as you've seen with this death of kids, it's not leadership. If there's a vacuum in leadership, people are going to take matters into their own hands. And we can see this is one of the example. And the, you know, there's just the failure to consult with the people in, affected, the communities in those low income areas in South Africa, in the township. They don't want to have these people in their, in their community. They don't. They feel that these people are not, um, um, they're undermining the laws of South Africa, which they are, as evident by these deaths, because they're 100% preventable. But also is the failure of the ANC led government, GNU, to enforce these laws. According to this Immigration Act, none of these foreigners should be operating these informal markets, um, especially in those low-income areas where most people in those communities are very tight-knit and they have cultural connection to their land and the people out there. And you bring all these illegal people in there. Obviously, this man, it looks, the story is that he was... Um, renting this home but then it started like many of them do they rent the house and then they start selling stuff and turn the home into a commercial entity I mean I was surprised when I was there in January like how is the township has turned into because when I was um, growing up in South Africa the township where the spaza shop would be located would be around the main street of the neighborhood you it wouldn't be around you know next door where the residential people it would be zoned for specifically for that commercial purpose not just within the residential area so these people they just came in rent the place and then um once they've rented a place they start having turning the space that I've rented into this puzzle shop. And obviously they sleep in those puzzle shops, which is the big no. If you're selling food, why would you have to sleep in the same area? So you see, there's a lot of failure in a lot of um, 
governance here is the governance municipality is responsible and also there's also an element of criminality among south africans as well because if you're renting somebody who is not who's an illegal in the country um you're abating somebody you're hiding somebody from authority that's also illegal but most of them would then have the papers of being you know asylum waiting for the asylum to be reviewed by the immigration officials uh, because some of them comes from Ethiopia, some of them come from Pakistan, Bangladesh. There's a lot of Pakistan and Bangladesh with asylum in South Africa. Um, and then you can ask yourself if, yeah, South African immigration asylum, it's about first country principle, meaning your next country where you're seeking asylum needs to be your next door. If you're coming from Pakistan, the next country you go to to seek asylum would be India or Thailand next to your country next door. You really shouldn't be flying all the miles to South Africa. That's not asylum. So they end up with asylum, you know, rejected. And, and then when it's rejected, what they would do then, they would then use this human right lawyers and try to have uh it review then it takes so many years for it to be reviewed and then in the meantime they start doing this you know studying these puzzle shops and some of it is also a syndicate you'll see with this illegal mi miners uh, story uh, that is actually similar with illegal miners the people who migrated to South Africa, maybe they got the status of being permanent. Then what they would do then, they would start, or maybe have a refugee status. They would start then inviting others to do the same thing and then get them involved with some criminality, some activities. Um, and then, yeah, just exploiting their fellow countrymen. And with these, also with the same thing around Ethiopia, Malians, uh, Nigerians, all the groups of people, you know, all these, they would then, they do the same thing. They, one comes in, be maybe have a successful refugee status, or asylum, then tend to refugee. And then they will invite others to do the same thing. And then they will start having, yeah, harbor them in their homes and then use them to do certain activities for them. Some, most cases, illegal activities that is not within their status of their immigration status. And then it goes on and on. But this puzzle shop has been their own thing. And then according to immigration officials, um, you know, the immigration laws, they shouldn't be there. They shouldn't be there. Even if they are refugee status, they shouldn't be owning it. They should either be employed in a, finding a job and working under employer, not operating these puzzle shops because it's high risk. It requires a lot of scrutiny as, as we can see now with the failure of governance by the ANC and the DA, all of them, they failed because they should have made sure that they, they prioritize this industry. And for many years now, ANC has been talking about this, that they're going to, you know, try to uh, register that as, as far as 2020, even with their minister of the late minister, Tito Mboweni, talked about it, finance minister. Every spaza shop must be registered with a license to operate. And more importantly for me, by the way, Minister Mtimu, must have a bank account. Must have a bank account and a tax number and must open the business for inspection by the Department of Health so that our people are not being fed um, expired goods and so on. So it's going to be a new way of doing things. And I think... But to, today is 2024. Like four, that this is about four years ago we're talking about. He talked about the same thing. So even with this registration at 21 days, I can bet that that's not going to happen. It will just be them not doing anything about it and let it go. Or the worst part, and I think that I suspect with this weak Ramaphosa, he's going to tell them he's likely to extend it. He's likely to extend it. And then that means more extension, more kids are dying. Because since the 21 days, he said that he's going to extend this. There's two more kids died. Two more kids died since the last time he spoke.
seven days after he spoke last Friday we had that a five year old and then an eight year old died after consuming the same puzzle shop so you, you can imagine why the family and the community are very angry with Ramaphosa and I think this is going to end ANC I think this is going to be the downfall. There was definitely going to be some re repercussion about this. And the local government election is coming up in about two years, 2026. So you got ANC people making these uh, decisions that are um, really ridiculous. They're not even called standard decision. If you've got a, a food poisoning or adulterous poison as this one, and you don't even know what sort of... A, you know, product we're looking for in terms of batch number because they're illicit goods. The best thing to do is to shut the store off. Don't get them to trade. Don't get them to trade until you find the source, which is you find the manufacturer, you find where they imported them. You've ruled out all the angles that is not just within the, the assumption and they've made a quick one, which I think it's really wrong, is that they just get everything. It was just, um, you know, these are uh, snacks that are packaged i you know the way you know the because the the what do you call the table falls was around the outside area then it's likely that it is due to actually um to being contaminated within uh the shops because these uh illegal migrants they have these they keep these table falls because they don't clean they don't tidy up there's a lot of crabs and even yeah they just yeah because it's the residential area if you start having shops and sell food in a residential area what are you going to have you're going to have rats so they start using these uh chemicals they that they actually import according to the minister of agriculture john stay hazen is that he actually said that they've actually tested all the table force the table force that's been found in South, South africa the lab have tested all of them are not produced in south africa they're not produced, so they're coming from the neighboring countries. So they're importing these table force from the neighboring countries, even though they need to be registered, just like you saw those antibiotics as well. So you see there's a lot of lawlessness here. We're talking about this absolute amount of lawlessness. There's no benefit for South Africa to have these people in the community. It is deadly now. It's very deadly. But who's to be blamed is the government. In future, in future you also, you that. need to learn to face your 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 own government. You, when you as a foreign national, when you come into any country, you familiarize yourselves with the laws of that particular country to understand which business space you must operate on. Yes, that's right. So you need to be familiarized yourself with the law. You need to know your my your migration status. What can cannot you do? I mean. I don't understand these people that think they go to the country and then they're going to do this lawlessness of stuff. That means their nature and the character of the person. You know, if people um, think lawlessness is it's as long as they're not caught, it's okay. So this there's no ethical uh, principle. There's no good ethics in actually when they run these businesses. They really are deadly businesses in my view. To occupy. Now you guys, you're just going all over because you think you're clever. You go all over doing as you please in this country. We are fixing this country now, and we are teaching you also to go face your own government and fix your own countries. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 move. Mm -hmm. I think we've said enough. Uh, like I said, let's let's work together. But why would you take somebody's uh, don't have idea? a right to take yes, 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 uh, what, what type of business do you have? Look, we've been nice to you people. We've been operating here when you were not supposed to, to operate. But why now when you assist our people, you must take their IDs. Why are you taking their IDs? No, I give him back. If they don't give him my money, they, 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 they no, I'm take it out new card. So, but no. why, why would you take an ID? Why are you taking their ID? Where's the ID? Why are you taking people's IDs when you are in illegal? Money? Yes. Can give, give us grace. Ah, there's no time. There's no time. You are going to sell it in your country. You are going to sell in your country. There's no time. Take your money. Take your money. First, take, take your money. Hide it. Yeah. Please. Take your money. All your money. Yes. All your money.
Is that all? Give me time. Where's the other stop money? We want boxes. Where's the safe money? No, 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 Wait, wait there, go wait there. Just make sure you've taken all the money, all your all your belongings, your documents, everything. Yeah. Please. Is it is your name Mohammed? Mohammed, please take yeah, everything of us. This was something that I was dreading actually. I was really dreading this. I could have predicted this that South Africans, we're not gonna stop for this week from a pause at 21 days when the kids are dying. You're gonna do this. They're going to do this. This is really much expectable. <laughs> it was really expected that they're going to do this. I expected this, actually. I I just thought, yeah, there's no way these people are going to wait for 21 days registration. In fact, 21 days registration is a stupid idea. While kids are being poisoned by this poison, by this chemical. What for? They continue to trade. They continue to to sell this poison to these to ev you know to these kids. And most of this product they sell, I would like I said, I alert all of them likely to be expired goods. They just relabeling them for unsuspecting consumer. And you're thinking, where is the consumer council in South Africa? Where is the role here? I mean, they're not even effective because this is, will be their own territory here to actually uh, finding out what's going on here, you know, about this uh, unethical consumer practice of these spaza shop owned by foreign nationals selling expired goods or getting illicit goods and then they lay, relabel those goods as if they are really good quality. Some of them, they actually repackage them into, uh, they make these brands, they make the brands, if most common brands in South Africa, they will make this fake one. And then they, after they make the fake one, then, then they change with the, they make a fake label of a known brand. And then with the fake product and just relabel as if it's a, the known brand. But then when they test it, people can see if it's a fake, it's a fake. Some of it, some of the bread, you can see that this bread, it's not really good bread. It's not an, a fresh bread. The way it's been sold, the way it looks, um, just generally disregard of this. This is um, happening in the majority of it. It's in the low income areas. That's what is make me so upset and angry about this. It's a low income areas where people have no money and they actually need to have this type of shops because it may be about 50 kilometers for the next um, shopping center. So obviously they need to have access to these type of, they've always been there for many years. They provided good um, sources of necessity things that people need to buy instead of going all the way spending money on a taxi or public transport to go but at least they can have this when they have one at bread bread you know something that doesn't last long yeah so they really need it for those essential items uh, but then the, then the ANC bring up all this about my friend people that are illegals to live in the country it's that's what happened you, you don't pour a border and you then don't have don't implement policies within the country, don't enforce the law, and you have people who are working, but they're not really working. Like, you know, how can a council have a shop like this and then ignore it, not ask the question? You know, are you registered? I don't need to see your registration. Why are you here? Why we shouldn't be selling stuff in this neighborhood because it's a residential area? It is same law as in Australia. You have to, you cannot be opening a shop in a residential area. It must be in a commercial street, you know. 
So the same law, essentially. But these councils aren't ANC council, majority of them, until this last election, you know, the May election, where they saw themselves around 40% mark for good reason. You can see why they at 40. You know, I think the 40 was generous, actually. It was generous 40 to give them 40. This is ridiculous. Man, your, your... Bring us boxes and plates now. Please, no, Bring them down. Look at that. Let's look at this. Oh my gosh. And what also they do, they also threatening their landlords as well. They're threatening even their landlords as well. And they also have formed these groups as well, the groups of uh, all of them illegals. So and then you could ask yourself, okay, if you got a group of illegals ganging on the citizen, where's the government? Where's the security? Why is the government not there protecting its citizen? That's a good question. You can ask that question. Because, yeah, they do. They do actually even from these gangs. So it is um, it's a really dangerous situation here for South Africans. When, when's I want to step in your pocket? Let me see. Okay. Come it's for your phone. Okay. Can you can you take a box and empty out all the important stuff, the money, the SIM cards, please? Your phones, you've got your phone. But I put those things there. Put those things, everything there. Put it there in the box. You sleeping? Close my ear. Is there somebody that's doing oversight on the stuff that we're taking out? Uh, 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 come, um, Lida, take this out here. Yes. Where's the other guys? Is there no other small guy, younger guys that can help? So he's been told many times to leave. So he hasn't been, he's been ignoring, just like the, all of them do, because they know that the ANC government is weak, it's not going to do anything. And the police are crap as ANC, some of them, except for KZN police. Um, yeah, so they just do whatever they do and, you know, you know, they've been told to vacate and then stay and not vacate and continue to stay there, illegal, of course. Because this foreign, this um, landlord knows that They've been warned that if you're harboring any illegal migrants in your home and you get them to rent just the space, you could go to jail. Because now a lot of them, they don't want them in, the, and especially now with the death of the kids, they don't want them in their neighborhood. They don't want them to rent the space because and still continue trading. If they're renting and living there, it's no problem, and they're legal, it's no problem. But if they're renting there and selling goods, they're selling, then it's a big problem. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of them, if it's this man in city, so legal, doesn't have paper to be in the country, been renting. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Shesha, Baba. Shesha, Shesha. So all of these groups are from the party, Patriotic Alliance Party, it's the centre-right party, the leadership is on the gate in Mackenzie, so they don't play those one. don't play. <laughs> well, where's all the young men? Let's ask all the young men to come and help, yeah. the young guys. Yeah. Let's make it ladies, let's make it play. Malida, ask this boy to come and help, this guy to come and help inside with the lady stuff. Lida, Lida. Come, come inside. In, Lida, Lida. Come, come inside. In, come in, come in. 
kom ja, vi så meni kot si sedi svar kot. Yeah. As I said before, yep. the, the leadership is lacking. So when there's a vacuum in leadership, people are going to take matters in their own hand. And you can hear from those patriarchic alliance uh, groups saying that Ramaphosa is weak. So everyone knows ANC is weak, Ramaphosa is weak. So who would want to be led by a weak leader? Nobody wants to be led by a weak leader. People like a strong, you know, a, you know, assertive leader, just like Gates and McKenzie or Hammond Mashaba, ATM. So you need a, a very strong assertive leadership, not somebody who is looking like very scared. They all look scared and see leadership. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I hope this gives you some insight about what's happening in South Africa, all of these um, illegal uh, miners and puzzle shops, they have one thing in common, illegal migration. The borderless South Africa. One thing in common, all of it. Whether they want to deal with it or they don't want to deal with it, the politician in South Africa, but this is going to be an issue. This remains an issue. Uh, they've got a mandate. They've got a mandate, and even before the national election in May, and I would say even next year, I mean, 2026 election is still going to be a very strong mandate around illegal migration. They all have one thing in common, illegal migration, these two stories. Um, and also, yeah, this one, the other one for uh, these uh, puzzle shops, they are very concerning because they threaten the future of South Africa, meaning the future of South African children and the safety, public health and safety. And they should have been prioritised. But, you know, when you have a leader like Ramaphosa, nah. so as you can see, this stuff, citizens shouldn't be doing this. You should be, I mean, these ones are not citizens, they're actually um, politicians, uh, centre-right party. Um, but, yeah, the 21 days just to these people to continue to trade under these circumstances, it's nonsense to, in my view. I mean, it is just putting uh, profit over kids of South Africa. This is what I see it, just putting the profit, uh, and this profit is also for people who are unregistered, who are not paying tax, uh, paying any tax. And so where do this money go? If they don't have bank account, they don't have any registration, like they said, many of them fund a lot of criminality elsewhere. So thank you guys for listening. Have a lovely day. If you're new here, please, you're welcome. Um, if you like the content, please consider subscribing. Until next time, bye.